Welcome to Game of Roses. This is Pace Case. This is Bachelor Clues, and we have just concluded the first round of playoffs. Hometowns. Hometowns, baby. I mean, we got so much this We're going episode. Home. We got our first two juice, Pace Case. Can you believe that? I can believe it, and they seemed reluctant. <laughs> There is so much to say about these two Jews. I have a full page of notes on the first one. Oh, good. So we'll get oh, good. to that. <laughs> get excited for this episode, guys. <laughs> we also got the stunning news that we're going to have back-to-back episodes. I believe we've predicted that on this very program. So next week, we're going to have Fantasy Suites followed by Men Tell All on a back-to-back Monday, Tuesday. So I believe our schedule is going to mm-hmm. shift. We're going to have the recap of Monday's Fantasy Suites out on Tuesday and the recap of the tell-all, uh, the Tuesday tell-all out on Wednesday. So there will be no Twibbon next week. Those are going to be our two episodes, the two recaps. I'm looking forward to both They're of always those, keeping actually. us on our toes with the schedule. <laughs> yes. They're like, can you handle two hours? But what about four? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know. I, I mean, they had to do it, right? But I mean, this does mean that we'll get a little bit of an off-season, I guess, because then won't the following week be... The last episode? The finale? Yes. And then we'll have so a few So then weeks that off. means what? Well, then. Oh, it, wow. We have t- time before Joan. Yeah. It means we'll have about two weeks, I think, before Joan Vassos' Golden Bachelorette season premieres. Perfect. Then we can do the rookie breakdown. Yeah, exactly. In those two weeks before. Yeah. So That's actually, it works out great yeah, for us. Thank you. The thing we thought was bad thank is actually you, good. Thank you, powers that be. But uh, shall we just dive into this pace case? We have some business, Let's I guess. Let's dive into it. 33 oh, wait, taps. business? Yeah, 33 taps. We're doing our watch parties every Monday night. Please join us for those. If you were able to come out for the watch party of this very episode, you would have seen pace case's glorious return to Los Angeles. Oh, I'm flying to the coast tonight. I can't wait <laughs> to get back in my little bubble. I know. It'll be fun to have you there again, but uh, let's do it, Pace Case. Shall we? Shall we jump into this? I'm gonna wear, I'm gonna wear something wild. I don't know what yet. Oh, okay. Maybe a ball gown. Holy shit! I will not be in a ball gown. I'll be wearing my standard. Maybe something uniform, to do with this episode. My Quince uniform. I'll just be wrapped in the American flag. <laughs> <laughs> in tribute, no doubt, to Marcus. Now let's begin mm. uh, this recap. This is. Game of Roses. We start with this very odd teaser. Yep. And I have a conspiracy town about this teaser. It was so strange and anticlimactic that I feel like they had originally a different teaser and they have re-edited it Mm. to make it a Jonathan teaser that's more palatable at this point. You know, I would happen to agree with you, except that I saw this episode. And there is nothing in it that you could have used as like a dramatic (laughs) teaser. It was all pretty by the book. There was no real drama. There was really no suspense in the end about who she was going to kick off. They tried to drum up a little bit of stuff with Marcus. But I think this is the best they got, which is a sister-in-law essentially saying, Hey, I met on Tinder and and we were love level fouring by date three and moved in after two weeks. I get it. Mm -hmm. And that was it. Love level four on date three. Strong. You ever had one? How of those? long were those dates? Oh, good question. Those could have been 24 hour dates. Are they 24 hour dates? Did they sleep together on the first date? Absolutely. This is information that was Tinder. missing from this teaser. Tinder. They met on Tinder. Tinder. Isn't that what that means? Uh, so? Oh, I thought that was I've a guaranteed block. No. Didn't realize. We lead different There's lives. There's chased people all over Tinder. Oh, well. I don't know. I've been out of the game <laughs> a little while. Maybe it is. No. <laughs> Things have changed. Pace case. All right. We begin portion one here. We are in our first hometown. It's in Houston. This is Devin Strader's uh, hometown city. And we see this trail of cows. And these Texas cows were not my creatures of the week. Devin waits in an open clearing in a park. He waves to Jen. She's in athletic gear. I feel a hooju coming. And we get our first hooju of the deceased. Wait. Yes. 
before the hoojoo, Devin puts his hands up to his <laughs> eyes in little claw formation, making little Devin periscope eyes, trying to see Jen closer in order to get ready for that hooju and this was my face play, play of the game yeah that was a good one I, I had kind of forgotten about that i have a different face play coming a little bit later there but, were a lot of great face plays yeah this season has been pretty good but for I love face play, I must admit. uh but what devin is doing here is trying to properly focus his vision on the incoming jen tran as she is delivering our first hooju of the season now was this a good hooju I'll, I'll, I'll read what I wrote here. Equal parts perfection <laughs> and disaster. Let's start with the approach. <laughs> An affront to the subsport. Jen literally says... Equal parts it was, perfection and disaster. There's Just like this season. There is a, a an Olympic level. There is a Kelsey Weir hiding within Jen Tran, but Jen Tran won't let her come out to play. The approach. Oh, the beast. If you haven't watched the, the show ever beast. before and you're watching it for the first time, there are four parts to a huju. The approach, the mount, the cling, and the dismount. I'm going to run through all four of these parts for this first huju. It deserves it because it was an interesting huju. Not a good huju, but an interesting huju. The approach is what I call an affront to the subsport. Jen literally says, <laughs> I can't believe you're going to make me run for this. It is verbal acknowledgement of her lack of enthusiasm. She slow jogs, arms at her sides. The only she way says she loves running. That too. So why is she upset? We see her do a whole run thing after this. But she is basically saying, I don't want to do the approach. I say the only way this could have been worse is if she had tripped and fallen. At least then, though, she could have played an <laughs> IFI. The mount is also hideous. Damn. Not Rested. clean. By any measure, she kind of launches into the side saddle hip thrust toward Devon, doesn't allow her a clean transition into the, into the cling, and it all looks awkward. It looks hesitant. It looks like someone who's never done a huju before. And I don't know if that's true yeah. or not, but it could be. Then we get into the cling, and we're... We recommend... I mean, you shouldn't be doing your first huju in game. You should practice this beforehand. 100%. 100%. It is highly recommended, because so you will have happen. to do this on camera. Then we get to the cling. The third part of this huju, and it's like a different hujuer. She has to work to get to the cling because of the lackluster mount, but eventually she pulls off a double, double ankle lock, hand to forearm, neck cradle, high as hell on Devin's body. She's almost wrapped around his chest, allowing her to rain down kisses, two of which she gave from above. And mm -hmm. her mount is so tight, it's unbreakable, basically. It allows Devin Strader to effortlessly march around this field. He takes three steps forward. He's kind of stepping side to side, and she's not moving. She is clinging to This is like a 100% mm -hmm. cling. Gets a couple of kisses, and then the dismount again. Not the same hujuer who was complaining about having to do approach. It's smooth, sporty. Got a little bounce as she hits the ground. Never breaks physical contact. Transitions into a double interlaced handhold as they start talking about the date. I just didn't get this huju. Overall, 6.24, horrible score, but only because the first half of the hooju was botched. Couldn't Look, believe it. the hoojus weren't good in this episode, I will say. They seemed reluctant, and if you're going to do it, you have to commit. Otherwise, it's yes. going to be really physically difficult to do. Uh, well, we see some later. Here. We'll get to some of these other hoojus that uh, some of them don't even qualify oh, as hoojus. <laughs> I have what if I, like. I may, Please. they then start this. Uh, <laughs> they then start the day portion of this hometown date, which is an actual nightmare. It's a run club. Oh, I know, and I. <sighs> I mean, we've seen this before. We've seen like neon runs and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's literally, I can't imagine a worse date. I'd be like, run a mile. What do you mean? Same. No. I'm I can't <laughs> out. I think any kind of physical activity like this, other than pickleball, something low impact, something where you're not going to be sweating mm -hmm. profusely. Other than that, uh, I would say just do away with Gentle all these yoga. kinds of things. But we do see Devin's Run Club shows up. They're all wearing shirts that they've had made that says Devin Love Run. And we see Roddy, who's wearing some mirrored shades and a headband. He's the leader of this run club, and Roddy was my Jorge, 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 Jorge Moreno. 
bystander of the week. Loved Roddy, mm. laying down the law right in the beginning, and he kind of becomes the, the de facto leader of this little mini date within the hometown. It was funny to see them try to have conversations while they were running. Yeah. Um, Devin does a little <laughs> voluntary nudity play, changes his shirt into these tots, and they go and run. Jen says, love is a relay race, apparently. And Devin says her running form is a turn on. They're having this whole conversation in front of his whole run club. <laughs> and they practice clicking their heels, which is cute. Yeah. I can do that. Oh, cool. They and then they do this interesting uh, shot where the they make out on this bridge and then all of the run club like run by them mm. streaming, which I thought was cool. Did you notice the music playing? I don't know how they filmed it. Did I? Um, no. Well, Why? they just gave a camera to a producer. To oh, was it Rocky? No, it was a song called "Running Like Wild." It's created by Vanacore Music, which is listed as a quote music production company that creates custom scores and music libraries for TV, film, and advertising. And this specific song also saw some airtime in an episode of The Kardashians. Jesus. Okay. I do my research. I, I believe this wow. is the same <laughs> company or same type of company that you see doing all of the Love Is Blind stuff, all of the Love Island USA stuff when they're not using licensed like pop music. Hmm. So fun least, fact: the more you know. Yeah, in that regard, Bachelor is kind of getting up to date with how they're they're not laying in that like old needle drop that they used to use from Bachelor season four. They're actually trying to update a little bit. Kudos to them. I thought it was like the Rocky score. Or where he's training. Yeah. Um, we then see this one couple in the run club kind of interview them. And uh, we don't get much out of this. Um, we see. Oh, and then we meet Devin's dog. And this creature runs at Devin. And he's obsessed with this ball that he brings. And this dog was it Charlie? Yes, this dog is named Charlie. This dog named Charlie was strutting <laughs> his stuff. He said, I'm going to be the star of this date. Sorry, Jen. Attention's on me now. And this dog was my creature of the week. week, 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 week. <laughs> Charlie the Hound was also my creature of the week. <laughs> It doesn't get better than this. We had some interesting creatures this episode, too. There were some that could have uh, taken the cake. We'll get to a, a hometown date a little bit later where we got weird taxidermy shots of animals. But uh, Yeah, season one vibes. <laughs> I know. It totally was. But Charlie did uh, take center stage here, was a part of this date. They're playing with Charlie, throwing scenes. the ball. So, Charlie, you get the award. We get this moment of Jen throwing the ball for Charlie Devin gives Charlie some water. Jen's ITMing about how hot it is that he's a girl dad to this dog. And then they're laying on the grass and talking about <laughs> Am how... Am I a boy mom? Yeah. Oh, my God. And you're a boy dad. I'm a man dad. Dogs, animals count. You're a man dad. <laughs> yeah. Scobby's a man. No, There's no questioning oh, that okay. at this point. They lay on the grass. Look, it's <laughs> certainly a boy. <laughs> <laughs> They're laying on the grass with Charlie, and Devin's talking about how nervous he is to introduce her to his family. Oh, I haven't done this since college. And, uh, you know, my dad is going to be there. He kind of popped in and out of my life when I was younger. They've had their problems, but he can't get married without their opinion. And he explains that their relationships in his family have never lasted up until his mom recently and he wants to do right by his family by bringing home the right one he has a good feeling and he wants his family to see that she's the right one on his face he's glow hunting here and mm -hmm. he itms that he doesn't want his family to point out something wrong with jen that he would then obsess about and basically we get i this liked this i liked this loading of the familial relationship curse that his mm. family is cursed in relationships and like yeah. can we get this one right break the curse yeah, I, 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 did, like that. I did too. I mean, I thought all of these hometowns were very simplistic in their construction. 
and I guess it's just mm-hmm. because they couldn't get people to do anything more interesting, but it's the guy is like, I'm nervous. My family's approval means everything. If that doesn't happen, I won't be able to get married. And Jen's like, we have a great relationship, but we got to get deeper. He's got some walls up. I need to know he's more than mm-hmm. just the funny guy, the this guy, the whatever guy. Every one of them was the exact same. It was all walls. Yeah. It was all walls. And um, Devin saying, I need to get my family's approval. It just feels like false stakes. It all is. Because you're like, eh, You can feel the producers eh. telling them to say this shit in ITMs. Yeah. but And that, to me, is bad producing. When you have a hometown around where it's like, all the relationships are going pretty good. They don't really have any problems. You need to figure something out, or at least during the day portions, do something very interesting. The run club thing was at least visually kind of interesting, but you know, Mm -hmm. it's no Madison Pruitt and pilot Pete playing basketball in her father's college arena where she's just like handling him, making him look bad. You know, that was a great hometown with a celebrity guest with yeah. Charles Barkley celebrity guest at any rate, we move on to portion two. It is the night portion or second portion of Devin's hometown date. As they approach the Strader family residence, we see a yard sign that reads welcome home. Devin howdy, Jen, this was mind blowing to me. The forethought of the family to put that sign out there. Have we ever seen anything like this? A yard sign that was that big? I mean, we've seen, we've definitely seen like a poster maybe, right. but nothing like this. And when he said it, this must have been my mom's idea. I was like, wait, did production make this sign? I don't think so. The mom made it. Yeah. Because if Love production that. made this sign, then we would have seen something similar in the other hometowns. The yeah. sign was like, in my opinion, in terms of the, the four hometowns that we got this week, the approach to the house is always like a piece of this, where the, the person who is from the hometown mm-hmm. is saying, you're going to meet this person and this person and this person, and are you ready, and let's get a kiss for luck. This sign would have been like, they could have done that in every hometown, but they didn't. I think this literally was his mom. I love it. Me too. At the threshold, they go over everyone we're going to meet. Mom, Jennifer, Dad, Timo, Grandma, Phyllis, uh, Gary, Grandpa, Brother, Pierce, Stepdad, Todd. And then we see this meeting of the family. They talk about, oh, they talk about the um, the strip show. And he's like, you don't even want to know what. Or she says, you don't even want to know what Devin was wearing. A G-string. It's <laughs> yeah. funny. <laughs> funny reveal. And um, we get our first mom glow for Devin that he, that she, he, she says, Jen is super genuine, sweet. And I could see the, wait, I wrote here jitters between yeah. both of them. She I says think. the good jitters, the jitters between, between, between the happy them. jitters. The giddiness. I count that as a glow. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, then they recap the how he got the group date rose. We always see here the lead saying, here's how your child is different. Yep. They got all of these zero pointers and this special thing. It's basically like a um, recap of their play so far in that season. What their dates were, where they've been, and how many zero point roses they've gotten. For those listening for the first time, a zero point rose is a rose granted outside of a rose ceremony. Group date rose, one-on-one rose, first impression rose, final rose is a zero point rose. Uh, so on and so knock, forth. Knock, knock, Rose. Knock, knock, Rose. Timo, Devin's dad, then ITMs that he can see the chemistry between them. Dad glow. So you've got nice. two parental glows right off the bat before they're even in their one-on-one conversations. But then Timo does pull Devin for that first one-on-one time. And then just before the one-on-one time, we get this creepy shot of a taxidermy fox standing guard in the Strader household. And I'm wondering to myself, are they giving him a fool edit here? Yeah. Or is this just like... Taxidermy is full at it. Absolutely. So you have to wonder what is going to happen later. I thought this might be indicative of he's out of the show. I thought that it might be foreshadowing mm. that. But it wasn't, clearly. We saw that he, he makes it through to the end. We get this one on time with Devin and his dad. Devin, uh, love level... Er, he loads a love level for, sorry, tells his dad that he does love her, but he hasn't told her yet. He sees the rest of his life with her. He doesn't want her to love somebody else. Devin says they haven't been the luckiest with relationships in their family, brings up this familial curse play again, and but Devin wants it to be different from him. for him. He doesn't, he doesn't want to be wrong about Jen. He wants his dad to be honest about if he's missing anything and Timo issues and other guys attack as his only real worry. He doesn't want him to get his heart broken, heartbreak attack on the back of this other guy's attack. And then we get another close-up of a taxidermy 
goat or deer head or something goat? to end the scene. Uh, I don't know. I like we've seen taxidermy many times in our beloved game. Season one, we got the full edit for one of the players' hometowns. We, we saw all of this, like so much taxidermy, like a um, a scary amount. Yeah. Uh, we've seen Kendall long yeah. with the taxidermy. We had a whole date where they make little taxidermied mice and stuff. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, it's definitely a, a quirky edit when you see that. We see Jen and the mom have this one-on-one time, and she talks about their similar familial PTCs, and... She also um, opened with a values attack here, which most of the parents did in all these hometowns. What makes Devin special? And then Jen is just like, mm. he's emotionally intelligent. He's so himself. He's so confident. And he's told me about the non-traditional family. Her answers, I will say, I love Jen as a bachelorette. I thought maybe the task was just too difficult with these hometowns because there are no real problems. She's getting asked the same kind of attacks again and again. All of her answers seemed very much the same to me. She would say a lot, Mm -hmm. well, I wouldn't be here if I didn't see a future with him. She used that defense, the I wouldn't be here if defense, multiple times in all of these hometowns. thought they could have varied that up a little bit, but... Mm. What uh, would you have liked to see? Well, for example, a values attack. What makes Devin so special? You, in my opinion, your best play here is to single out one moment during the course of their play and say, in the this G-string. moment. Sure, the G-string. <laughs> what makes him so special? Well, uh, when he came out in a G-string, I knew right then I had a special one on my hands. I would take some, you know, Jen's always talking about these little moments. I would have picked for Devin perhaps the moment when they were doing the uh, farm obstacle course date and he walked over Mm. and made a special moment just for her. I would have said something like that. So you're anchoring it back to something we've all seen as a fourth audience in this moment Mm. where he steps out from the crowd and kind of signifies himself as a different type of player, a better type of player. Instead, it's just these weird generalized like he's emotionally intelligent. He's so himself. He makes makes me feel seen. Yeah. Um, and then we get, um, we do get a lot of parents asking about the love levels in this episode. Mm -hmm. She asked, do you feel like you're falling for him? Are you love level three? And Jen says, I am love level three. And, oh, Jen and the mom are in matching black floral tops. I thought that was interesting. And they have the same name. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Are they the same person in different timelines? Could be. Are we getting into some kind of time travel, multiverse, some kind of quantum splitting mm. here? Well, Sam M is a time traveler. We've already established that. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> we then see some one-on-one time. I don't time. know if he's, he's uh, perfected it, though. <laughs> <laughs> he's still working on it. We see some one-on-one time with uh, Devin and his mom. Mom opens with a how you do, and Devin says it's been a weird experience. He wants this motherly advice, and he's like, I've been to places with Jen that I've never been with anyone else. He's scared. There are other people still involved. He can't stand that. Mom asks how he's feeling about Jen, and she then, again, very clearly differentiates love level three and love level four. Are you falling in love, or are you in love? And he says, I love her. This is a loaded love level four, and it's uh, the first time he's been in love for real. He hasn't told her yet. And he's scared because she could tell somebody else that she loves them. And the mom says, you need to play the love level four if you want to beat the other guys and win. And Devin calls his mom the hero. <laughs> and they hug and love level four each other. And then we see uh, they leave, get all the hugs, out on the porch. Uh, Devin and Jen are talking. And Devin says he's had so many fears coming into hometowns. Kiss. He says he was not going to walk in here and make assumptions. But he doesn't care anymore. I love you. Love level four, and that was my play, 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 play of the game. You must play a love level at the end of hometowns. You must do this. He's already gotten to love level three, and now he has put himself ahead of the pack by playing this love level four in a hometown round that didn't have a lot of um, standout play in it. I thought this was the biggest, the loudest, and the thing that made it the most difficult for her to dismiss him. Once you play a love level four, if it's not kind of immediately 
met with skepticism or, oh, this isn't right, like Sam M's, for example, immediately after he mm-hmm. said it, she was like, come on, dude. If she doesn't give you that reaction, it's going to be very difficult for her to kick you off the show later. So I think he solidified his place in Fantasy Suites with this love level four. Devin being the first <laughs> player to play a love level four in our beloved game this season was also my play, 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 play of the game. They might have been going towards full edit. They got all those taxidermied shots, yeah. but the love level four, I agree with you, was a way to stand out in this episode. He doesn't technically know what other love levels the other people are at, but being the first to love level four is generally a great idea and he has cemented his route to fantasy suites with this i agree and he even gets a level level three from jen in response here yes i I mean i was like oh he extracted a love level three but multiple people are gonna do that it turns out in the teaser she's level level fouring everybody this end of the season is going to be a disaster in like every Messy. way possible. I can't wait. The gameplay. She sees a future. He says, I love that. Lion diking. And they kiss in the auto zone. And he says, I could get everything I ever wanted. Next portion. Hometown number two. Fairfield, Connecticut. For Jeremy. Remember, Jeremy? He made it to hometowns. I know. I'm like, how is this fucking happening? He wasn't long for the game, though. I mean, sometimes you get a floater who makes it into playoffs, and this is as far as they make it. We, we saw that happen here. But she ITMs that she grew a lot closer to Jeremy in his one-on-one, which was the last one-on-one that she was on of the regular season. But she needs answers to see if he can really be a life partner. Again, this, like, everything's great, but I need real depth. I need something else. I don't know. I need clarity. We get a Huju here, and it's worse than the first one by a lot. The approach is a slow walk. The mount is not a mount at all. The anchor, Jeremy, has to literally pick her up. She gets no air, not even a little bit. The cling is so bad that they have to... I don't know if you scrutinized this like I did, but I rewatched this about 275 times. The cling Hmm. is so bad, they have to insert a high-angle shot of Jen and Jeremy kissing where it shows them kind of from, like, uh, mid torso up so they're trying to make it look like they're still in the huju but she's standing on the ground her head is below his head so they just put in a kind of down angle shot of them kissing to try and make it look like it was part of the huju but it's not jen's head is hmm. again below jeremy's then we cut to the actual okay. cling where her head is above his so the very next shot she rises in stature by about two feet it's it's terribly I edited. I did not notice that. The dismount. I did notice for the first time how short she is in this episode mm-hmm. when she was with the run club. I was like, it looks like they're taking a small child running. Yeah. <laughs> she was so much shorter than everyone else. For, um, for this dismount, she is grunting and growling sounds that make it seem like it is difficult physical labor. You should never be grunting when you're doing the dismount. Overall, I gave it a 2.32. Mm-hmm. Great bachelorette, bad who Dang. Well, sh- they make jokes about how they're at this dead river. She says, are you here to kill me? And he says, we're going shopping. I'm like, okay, are we going to get like a Corinne Olympios, Nick Vial style date? Did you see the text no. on screen? What? When she says that joke, is this where you're going to kill me? That's reprising a joke that he said on their one-on-one twice. When she was taking him to a back alley, they put text on the screen that says, not Camp Crystal Lake. Did you see that? No. Do you know the reference? Camp Crystal Lake? Do you know the movie series Friday the 13th? Jason Voorhees, the hockey uh, Uh, mask killer. I mean, I know what that is. All right. That Camp Crystal Lake is where the first movie takes place. It's where all the teens get killed by Jason. Interesting. So interesting. All right. So it's interesting. The reference is lost on you, and perhaps then we can assume by extension most of the audience. Yeah. And this is for sure a fool edit. This is like something they would do in Bachelor in Paradise. And you know from that text on screen, he done. He's a fool edit because of where they go next. Stu Leonard's. 
And let me tell you, I'm originally from Darien, Connecticut, mm. which is very close to where they are. And we used to go to Stu Leonard's all the time as a child. I have not thought about it. I have not seen it <laughs> since I was a child. And right. all of these shots, I was like, oh, my God. Like, it's this is the one in Norwalk, Connecticut. This is literally where I went. And I was having these flashbacks of going to Stu Leonard's as a child. I was like, oh, my God. It was very strange for me. Being traumatized by but, the animatronic creatures. I did a little research from Wikipedia. Yeah. Stu Leonard's is a regional chain of seven supermarkets in Connecticut, New York, and New Jersey, which Ripley's, believe it or not, deemed, quote, the world's largest dairy. And Fortune uh, magazine listed it as one of the 100 best companies to work for in 2011. Cute. Well, some of the <laughs> animatronics have not been updated since I was a I child. <laughs> they were terrifying. Which was strange, yeah. uh, strange to see. The, like the cow and the mm -hmm. chickens were definitely the same ones. Um, just a very weird, weird moment for me to watch this date. It was one of my favorite um, dates to watch, though. Yeah. And they play around, you know, they do. She says, I love some glazed nuts. They do some donut play. Jeremy's um, juggling avocados they, at one point. I thought that was a nice special talent. Ooh. We see them put on Stu Leonard apron tots and pretend to check out people. <laughs> this was very Ben Higgins and Amanda Stanton at McDonald's. Get to work. <laughs> Let's cosplay as the pores. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? Um, and also, it seems like out of order. Then they... They're back at the avocado. They keep going back to the avocado. So I'm like, this is not in the right order. And then this lady comes out of nowhere. She's got brown hair. She looks completely lost and confused. And this lady was Jeremy's aunt happening upon them. And she was my Jorge, 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 Jorge Moreno bystander of the week. We, 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 we. I don't know how she got here. I don't know if this was actually an accident. I think it was. That she ran into her. Because she got no screen time. She was like, oh, hi, right. and then gone. Had this been a produced segment, they would have had some conversation about something that would have, you know, set up a wall or set up whatever Jen needs to get out of the hometown later that night. Or mm -hmm. she would have actually been at the hometown later that night. She wasn't there. I think this was literally... No an accidental run-in but she was there was in a blonde wig because she oh. looks identical <laughs> to her sister yeah i was like wait a minute did i miss this but you're right jeremy's mom no, and his I loved aunt look it. very similar i loved it it was it was so funny and um just whatever this woman did, whether it's by accident or she figured it out and was like, I'm getting on. He didn't invite me yeah. to the meeting of the family. I'm getting on this season. Yeah. She's just like, where's the camera crew? I got to get the." We learn this is like there's some horrible, estranged, embattled relationship between her and her sister. They never talk again. I can't yes, believe you exactly. let her show up and get in the show. That's probably not true. I'm just making all this up. I'm sure they're great friends. Exactly. They uh, make a flower bouquet for the mom so elegant, so demure, and then they kiss, and we go to the meeting of the, the second meeting of the family, J it's, and Jeremy's it's... house is crazy tall. Yeah. It looks like the Weasley's house. It's worth noting, possibly, that in the prior portion, it ends with Jen ITMing that they always have fun together, but she's looking for a partner, and she wants a serious side. So that's going to be Jeremy's mm -hmm. task in this. She needs a love level. Yeah, meeting of the family. He's got to get serious. And I agree with you. Their house was um, very tall. It was. They make out on the threshold. We don't get the prep on the names here, although we get it um, via voiceover. The mom is identical to her sister. Um, husband Michael, sis Lindsay, fiance Alex, another sister, and um, <laughs> Jeremy explains his limo exit. Uh I uh, his line, which I had forgotten. I, you know, I have a this car, and some people say overcompensating. Just want to let you know, I have a really, really big dick or whatever. And the mom does this amazing face play that was almost my face play of the game. The mom's amazing face play was my face play of the game. Full mouth aperture, 
full eye aperture shock at what her son has said on a national tv show she can't believe it all she's calculating in her mind is like oh my god how is this going to come across when this finally airs on tv Mm -hmm. karen then itms that they looked cute together and sweet together that's a mom glow but she admits that when jen was announced as the crown and she said what she was looking for that does not describe jeremy (laughs) So she's already kind of doing an Adams right. family play here. <laughs> right? I was like, did Jeremy not prep his family? Clearly what is going not. on here? Clearly he not. He was like, there's no way I'm making it to playoffs. Don't even worry about it. Yeah, basically. They're like, wait a minute. This is a hometown, right? Our son? You're taking our son on a hometown. Okay. Oh, top four, really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's like, mom, I got to get out of this. What do I do to get out of this show? Oh, take her to uh, Stu Leonard's and juggle avocados <laughs> for in front of the singing cow animatronic. That'll do it. We get some one-on-one time <laughs> <laughs> here with Emily, the younger sister. Emily opens with a values attack. What are you seeing in Jeremy? Sorry, this is um, Jen and Emily. What are you seeing in Jeremy that you don't see in the other guys? Jen says, well, we have a good time together and the best laughs. She feels so herself, but they haven't expressed their feelings yet, so she doesn't know where his head's at. She thinks he's holding back. Jen asks Emily if he, if she thinks Jeremy's ready for an engagement, and she's like, maybe not, but he probably does want to have a partner who makes him happy and fulfilled. So his whole family is kind of Adam's family here about, like, he may not be ready. They don't trust the process. Yeah. We then see one-on-one time between one on one, uh, Emily and Jeremy, and he says, I've never been so happy around someone. Um, she said... <laughs> She basically said that you have walls, and he's like, what the fuck? I have walls. I've been so emotional. The way she says it, too. (laughs) The shock was hilarious. Jen told me you got your walls up, my guy. (laughs) (laughs) I loved that speech play here from younger sister Emily. But yeah, he's like, what? I'm not playing a walls game. And he IT. We do see Jen extract these love levels via the yeah. family members. Totally. Um, uh, it's a good strategy. We see this one on one time with Jeremy and his mom, Karen. He tells her he's happy, fully comfortable. Uh, his mom says, So you've had fun together. Have you told her how you feel? He said, It's been fun. Then there is in this conversation, I don't know if you noticed this. This is the only time this happens in the whole episode. There's a dissolve in the conversation. Usually in these conversations, you're just cutting back and forth between whoever's talking. They throw a weird dissolve in here for some reason. I miss that. I don't know if it was just like, it almost seemed like an editor mistake. Like they had that transition in between the two clips and just like, oopsie. I'm curious to, (laughs) we watch screeners of this. I'm curious to see if it's in the final edit. You think they'll change it? Maybe. Interesting. Maybe looking very closely. Um, Um, We get the skeptical mom attack here. You know, if there's no love, you can't get engaged. And we then see uh, him and his mom talking and uh, they talk about whether the engagement and he goes, if it's the right person, I could be ready for an engagement. Um, And she's like, it's a lifetime commitment. She is going hard at this at this Adams family. She literally says it's not a game. It's not a show. It is both of these things. Yeah. Yeah, what do you mean it's not a game? It's a game of roses. And then we see... Heard of it? Yeah, of course. That's why we called this podcast Game of Roses. Mom, Karen, come on. Don't you listen? Karen? One-on-one time here between Jen and Mom Karen. She issues an other guy's values. Jeremy did not prep family. (laughs) No, clearly not. Or maybe he did. I mean, this is something that we talk about in our book, and, and it's something that I coach players to do as well. If you get to hometowns and you for sure don't want to move to Fantasy Suites... There are ways to get out of it, and this is a primary example. You can kind of prep your family to do what we call an Adams family play, which is you are against the process, you are skeptical of it all, your uh, child or sibling is not ready for marriage, it, the, the person they brought home is not right for them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There are many ways to do an Adams family. Uh, Desiree Hartsock's brother probably did it best in recent, recent history, I say, but that's like 12 years ago or something. Sean Lowe uh. comes back and her brother's like, I think you're a playboy. 
Oh, no, I think you're just a playboy, you know? You're just having fun with the circumstances, you know? Just whatever comes along, you know, just have fun there, then go to the next one, have fun, you know? <laughs> Iconic. Loved it. Absolutely Iconic. Loved it. You're a playboy. I Maybe the code is like, look, if I'm really into her, I'm going to take her to the country club, but if I'm not, we're going Stu Leonard's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's and how the you'll aunt know. was doing recon. That's what it was. The aunt was sent yeah. in to see if they were there. She comes back and reports to her twin sister. It was the mom in the way. There is no Stu aunt. Leonard's initiate Adam's family strategy. <laughs> <laughs> he, she sent her other twin sister to the country club to see if they were there on that day. Yeah. Country club vacant. They were not there. Uh, what yeah. what it's go time. <laughs> I don't know why it's I'm go time on Adam's family. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, sister. Adam's family is a go. I repeat, Adam's family is a go. Click. Yeah. He's juggling at the avocados. <laughs> uh, we then they leave. They go to the, the bench to to discuss all of this. And she says, are you ready for an engagement? Ask again. I'm ready for the right person. I'm falling for you. I'm so happy. He does a love level three here. You know, he kind of has to. And I hope she's feeling the same way about me, but we don't see a love level three back. They yeah. kiss in the auto, auto zone. And she says, I'm hoping Jeremy can get there. Mm. And we see, oh, the neighbors. Jeremy's uh, parents' neighbors are behind Jeremy watching them as in the auto yeah. zone, which I liked. And Jen also has a line here. She says in this final ITM, today has been hard because his family was so skeptical. So she's even pointing to the Adams family uh, play mm. there as a reason maybe that, that he won't move forward. And that is, it's a part of this game. If your family is skeptical in any way of this, that can be used as a reason for the lead to say, look, if your family's not on board, that's going to be hard in the future of this relationship. And so, You're giving sorry, them an out. Essentially, yes. Uh, portion five begins, hometown number three, Jonathan San Diego. He's pondering. He's walking through some architecture. Jen is athletically dressed as she comes to meet him in this public thoroughfare. She ITMs that he he needs to start opening up to her or else. All these guys are like, you better open up. I need those love levels. And she's correct. I mean, this is where you play him. But her insistence for all of these guys, like it has to be a lowering of the walls. I need to see the emotions. We got to get deeper. All of that's implied in a hometown. Saying it again and again mm -hmm. is just kind of like it doesn't elevate the presentation of the hometown in any way. And I'm not putting this fully on Jen. The producers have to do a better job of getting what they need out of her. And I think by the time they yeah. got to these hometowns, they were just like, shit, none of these relationships really have any kind of problems. Whatever beef between the guys used to exist is squashed. And we see that obviously in a very interesting scene in the end of this. I think they just didn't know how to make any of it dramatic. And so we get kind of the same pattern. No, and they in chose the same. That's the thing. They chose the same storyline for each one. Yeah. Like at least say one of them. Like, oh, you know, the I'm worried he's not over his ex, or like yeah. I don't know something. Um, I thought this was the best Huju of the bunch. What did you think? Here's literally what I wrote, and we get another Huju. This is the best one so far by far. Yes. And say what you will about the Huju, I get hundreds of DMs every hour saying. Why do you put so much stock in the Huju? It's just a fun little thing. Why are you so into it? Why do you give it scores? No, 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 no. Because, you see, the Huju, in my opinion, conveys how excited she is about the different players. And you see it here mm. with Jonathan. I, For me, this Huju, I'll just roll through it. The approach is intense. She flies into frame from screen left. Just a blur. Like, she is running as fast and as hard as she can. Jumps. She's going to Kool-Aid man through him. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. He just turns into, like, pink mist. Oops. Um, <laughs> Oops. <laughs> she couldn't be more enthusiastic. The mount is athletic. It's a one-hop launch into a relatively high cling. And although she doesn't get initial ankle lock, she works to get it eventually, allowing her a tight grip around Jonathan's waist that gives her the leverage to deliver one, two, three, four kisses from this cling. And then her dismount, not great. She does break physical contact almost as soon as her feet touch the ground in order to pull her hair back. 
But overall, this is a 7.33. If she could have put the together the approach and the mount from this Huju with the cling and dismount from Devon's Huju, you've got something rivaling a Kelsey Weir Bachelor Season 24 International Round Huju. This was... Dang. It, it's showing you... Invoking the Weir. She had elements of it. Um, it's showing you that Jen can do this. That's what this Huju told me. She is capable of producing a fantastic Huju. And she just kind of doesn't, you know, to use a phrase that they were using in this, I think Jeremy said this, can't get out of her own way. You can tell she doesn't want to be doing this and you have to mm -hmm. give in fully. You gotta go 100%, just like the love levels, if you're gonna do a good Huju. Nonetheless, I, I'm gonna maintain this Huju for me was like, oh, he wins the ring. I got that from this Huju. And from some I other hope things. you're right. We'll I am about. praying. God, I right. know. I know. She's um, dancing in a minefield right now. And you're just like, oh, fuck. She got rid of Jeremy. Oh, God. 66% uh, chance that it's going to end a disaster. <laughs> I, I'm i so scared. I'm so scared. I feel like yeah. I'm watching Presumed Innocent again. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh my God. God. That's Who's not good. Be? <laughs> This season of The Bachelorette is just like presumed innocent. What? <laughs> oh my God! All right, so Jonathan. I just says, finished it last night. <laughs> I, uh, I I went way ahead. <laughs> Catherine's gonna be mad at me. Oh no. Uh, <laughs> um, it was just so good. I loved yeah. it. Uh, Jonathan does a. They go to a little tiny seals stadium to play lacrosse. I feel like he already showed her his lacrosse. I would have maybe gone in a different direction mm. with this, but, you know, it's fine. They get to both show off that they are good at lacrosse. You know what's... And at, um, they do, like, handsprings or something. Uh, like, more what? cartwheels and round-offs. They were doing this around the um, around? the winery as well. They were doing their cartwheels and backflips and stuff in the grape orchards. Can I, you do a cartwheel? Me? Yeah. Who, Me? I don't know. I was the 1997 Quadrant 4 Southwest Geography Cartwheel Champion. Oh. Uh, no. I, I could probably still do one, I guess. Job, but I please. haven't done one in many years. Maybe it would uh, shatter my spine. I, I have can't. no idea. But, uh, I can't do that. I, I saw this group date similarly, to, or this group date, this uh, hometown date in the same way you did. We've already seen it. It's nice that they get to be on a big field or whatever. And they do. They both seem to like it. That's the point of this. Mm -hmm. is that I think it is a 4TRR good idea. That said, I am yearning. You're in your element. Yeah. Letting the bachelorette shine, which is generally a good idea. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we get a kiss here, and Jonathan ITMs the most special thing about them being together is this unspoken energy. Another kiss. He ITMs that the internal battle that he's been having is uh, about his past relationships, and that's stopping him from moving too quick, so he's playing these kind of false walls. They sit down on the field and talk, and he tells her that he has these walls up because of the PTC, and he says, you know, I don't throw around the word love lightly. He's using a sacred word defense here. Mm -hmm. And Jen ITM is appreciating good his idea to set Good idea to do a sacred word defense, and then you're going to love level three later, oh, I think. Oh, absolutely. If you haven't played a love level um, three or four, you definitely want to do a sacred word defense before you play it later that day. It adds gravitas mm -hmm. to the play. But uh, we see Jonathan ITMing at the end of this portion that the stakes are massive and he wants to see her interact with his family to help him get to the point to see if he's falling in love or not. All of them are saying that too. It's like, my family has to approve. My family's uh, ideas are important my to me. My family will unlock the love level three. Yeah, or scatter this relationship to the wind, basically. Next portion, we get this third meeting of the family for Jonathan, and we see a little clip of the family before they go in, and the sister-in-law says, I'm going to be able to tell right away, kind of like a pre-glow ultimatum. Yeah, glow expert. Yes, and they go in, we get dad, Mitch, bro, Zach, the wife of Zach, and we see that these are the people from the teaser. And wife Emily, sis Christy, they kiss at the threshold. They, um, we still cut back to the family. We're going to look at their body language, like if they have chemistry, if we can glow them. And Jonathan is looking for clarity. Uh, 
we see them go in and uh, we see this scene from the teaser about Tinder, third day, uh, <laughs> love level four, and uh, the brother ITMs that he looks happy. This is Bro Glow. Bro Glow, hell yeah. We then see one on one time with Zach, the brother, and Emily and Jen. Zach issues a time attack, then issues an other guy's attack back to back. He asks Jen if she's falling for any of the other guys, and Jen says, "Yeah, I have strong relationships." Like I was like, "Wait, what? Don't tell him that. What are you doing, <laughs> Jen?" And she's like, "I wouldn't yeah. be here if the relationship wasn't strong with Jonathan. This is her first. I wouldn't be here defense." And Zach asks if she can fall in love with him. And Jen smiles and says it's scary for her, but they're on the cusp of it. And uh, Zach says he wants to protect John. And Jen appreciates the honesty. She gets it. He wants to protect him, blah, blah, blah. We see one-on-one time with Mom, Lisa, and Jen. Mom, Lisa opens with a, you seem smitten, could see yourself. This is a mom glow. Uh, you, you Could you see yourself with John long term? She says, yeah, they built this great groundwork. He's special. She says, is he a contender? Yeah. I was like, oh, reader behavior. Open gameplay speech. Yeah, I love it. They basically talk about his um, previous relationship being toxic, and she knows that that's making him hold back a little, and the mom issues an other guy's attack. There's four guys left. And Jen says, again, she wouldn't be there if it wasn't because he's special and all this. She just keeps saying that. And it's mm -hmm. like, yes, Jen, you would be there because you've signed a contract and you are being paid money to be the star of the show that requires you to be there. You would be there. That would have been a great response. Yeah. I'm contractually exactly. obligated to be at this meeting of the family, actually. It's like, what about Jeremy? What about Jeremy? You were there for his family. And it didn't go anywhere. We'll find out later. Oh, my God. We see John talking with his sister, quote, the emotional one. She says, you have to go big or go home. Play that love level. We see one-on-one -on -one time with him and his mom and basically says uh, the exact same thing. You have to go 100% if you see this long term. Um, she says she never brought up looks at all. I was like, yeah. she loved your communication. I was like, what is this? The mom being like, you're so hot. People are always yeah. talking about how hot you are to me. Every what? time I've ever talked to a girlfriend of yours before, they're all just talking about how hot you are. Jen doesn't even see the hotness. I love this bomb though. She reminded yep. me of Connie Britton mm. and she's the only one who I really feel like gave an actual mom blessing and that's yep. why she was my oh. Sweet Nums Familial Award. Oh, nice. John's mom. Yeah. Um, she then tells John that at some point you have to fall back and trust. You'll never know if you don't put it all out there. You'll second guess it forever. You have to take that chance. They love level for each other. He ITMs that he got clarity. We get some mom tears here as they hug. They leave outside. We're on a bench. Jonathan and Jen now are having their, their post-familial meeting debrief. We get a kiss. He thanks her for everything and says that they loved her. And it opened his eyes so much. He loves so much about her. Hero music is swelling. He's getting there. He says it would be impossible to say that I'm not. And she's like, huh? What did you say? She makes him word it properly. I'm Ooh, falling for you. Yeah. Still maintaining a sacred word defense. He doesn't say the word love, but this is a love level three. And uh, we get one, two, three. And she love level threes kisses. and back. Yeah. She love level threes and back. I and I thought this was a, a very like cute way of playing a love yeah. level three. Like I'm being coy. I'm still sacred word defensing, but... Yeah. Here it is. And I they have, make out in the auto zone. I have just a brief statistical uh, check-in. Okay. Jeremy's date had six kisses. Devin's date had eight. Jonathan's date? How many kisses do you think it had? Twelve. Fifteen. Ah! You tell me. This is purposeful. They can put however many kisses they right. want in the edit. They can make mm -hmm. any guy look like he's getting the most kisses. They gave that to Jonathan. You tell Interesting. me. You tell me. He's not the ring winner. I mean, I hope you're right. I hope you're right. We get 
in the next portion, hometown number four in Tacoma, Washington, it's Marcus, the one we've been nervous about the whole time. We see a goose. We see a railroad crossing. We see no huju. Disrespectful. No approach. No approach. He has to literally pull her off the ground. And I would say this. Some people may say, well, there's a bunch of rocks and stuff. It's bumpy terrain. Yeah. Terrain is never an excuse to not do a huju. Ask one Rachel Lindsay about doing a huju in the Finnish Lapland of Bachelor Season 21 in what was, by my memory, 22 foot tall drifts of snow. <laughs> They were not that tall, but they were about In my memory, high. she went 20 feet in the air. That too. She sprang she out of snow like, that was up to her waist like a uh, Marvel superhero to get yeah. what was essentially a perfect huju on Nick Bial back in that fantasy suite round. So, But you also know that if you miss it, you have snow to cover your fall. This is very dangerous terrain. Do you want to be if one of the greatest bachelorettes falls. of all time or not? No risk. Uh... Or was it no reward without risk? Take some advice from all these moms. You got to go 100%. I've only done one huju in my life, and it was on sand, and it was really difficult. So I don't know. It's hard. Jen loads love level two for Marcus. She's hoping he love levels. They sit at this bench by the water, and he describes who they're going to meet. His adoptive parents are not there, but parental figures, his friend Scott and his and his wife, and then his sister, Gabriella. And he says, I don't want anyone else. They kiss. I just have cut to... <laughs> if I may. Yeah. I was just thinking may. about hoojus. And uh, I thought back to <laughs> the first hooju I was ever a part of. I, I think this is accurate. It occurred in high school with my then high school girlfriend. And it what? occurred. You hoojued in high school? Hell yeah. I didn't. I was an anchor. You were cool. I got hoojued. Um, it was, it took place on a softball field. Now the first Huju mm, in Mary our Delgado? beloved game took place in season six of the bachelor between Mary Delgado and Byron Velvic in Tampa, Florida on what a softball field. I didn't even know that season hadn't even been shot and I was already doing Huju's on softball fields. I didn't even know. Nobody It's knew. all meant to be. Bachelor didn't exist when I got that Huju. Wow. That's right. Anyways. I mean, I wasn't born yet, so I don't know. Is that true? I don't know. I no. I was born. You were probably a probably baby. Was. You were barely born. You were a barely born. I was at Stu Leonard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just getting traumatized. By Learning how to jungle avocados, <laughs> talking to the cow. <laughs> all right so um we then see it's a giant party yeah. there's a thousand people so in this people. very strange bunker looking house and we see multiple american flags one inside one on the porch mm -hmm. we meet someone who's really standing out ethan a fellow ranger and we see them kiss uh marcus is like they'll love you at the threshold they go inside and then Ethan is really trying to get there first and be the star. He says, what? Your first 101 was skydiving? OMG. There's also a wall of faces that I couldn't stop looking at. Um, some sort of uh, gallery on the wall and a burger spread. Um, we first see one-on-one -on -one time between Marcus and his dad figure, Scott. He's seeking clarity, and he says, I'm trapped between love level one and love level four. There's nothing in between. Yeah. What could there Dude, be? <laughs> you got two to play with there. You could be doing... He could have played level level two and three on this date had he wanted yeah. to. In yeah, the morning. I was starting to fall I'm starting this to fall. morning, but now I'm falling. Yeah. <laughs> After seeing you make your burger on that burger After spread you in front underneath of the American, the American flag. flag. <laughs> That's, American flags is Marcus's love language. <laughs> After I saw how patriotic you were, I just had to make that step. Yeah. Um, I, he's afraid, he tells the dad figure. Scott says, you're an overanalyzer. Yeah. Um, Next segment, we see one-on-one -on -one time between Jen and Sue, the mother figure friend, 
and she sees a future, but he's a slow burn, no love levels. Um, and I'm scared. He's so perfect. Oh, God. Hard to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, one on one time between Marcus and Gabby, his sister. I did like the sister. She was, um, she kind of like had a very gentle way of speaking that kind of gave me like yeah. spirit guide vibes. Marcus's sister, for what it's worth, was my Sweet Num's familial player mm. of the game. I think with she all the good. allegations that are out there against Marcus currently, his sister did a good job in this episode of uh, humanizing him a little bit. Mm-hmm. If yeah, she did done, do tear you know? play. She had great tear play. Which was really good. But yeah, here she opens this one-on-one conversation with Jen with a values attack. What makes my brother stand out? And Jen says, uh, well, since the first one-on-one, he opened up about things he's been through. And she cares about him, but she doesn't know how much he feels for her. What? How, how is that? What makes him stand out? He opened, he, he told her about the PTCs. I mean, His at this PTCs point, were, were stood yeah. out amongst all the PTCs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They His were the PTCs most explosive. PTCs were um, very intense. That's why he is perfect for me. I think Jen knows who her ring winner is, and I think it's Jonathan. And I think with Devin and right. Marcus, she's just treading water here. That's at least what it felt like to me. The sister uh, says his wall play is because of all the trauma. This was good, like, supporting the walls. Jen produces tears here. This is why I am terrified. I feel like Marcus is the ring winner. Hmm. I don't know. But maybe he's going to exit. It kind of looks like he might. Yeah. Um, uh, The sis says he struggles being vulnerable. Jen says, I also have PTCs and I've been through a lot. And the sister's like, so you love him? And she's like, I'm holding back. She produces tears. The sister produces tears. Jen loads level love level three for Marcus. I care about him very strongly. I'm falling. And sh- the sister says, I saw the connection. I've never seen him smile like that. Sister Glow. Sister Glow. Hitting it out of the park. Played directly to Jen. Usually Glows are played in ITMs. This was like a, a one-on-one conversation Glow played right there to the lead. I thought it was brilliantly done. We see them hug, and then uh, Marcus's sister ITMs that he deserves happiness, produces some more tears, and then we get this important one-on-one time between Marcus and his sister, and she's like, I like Jen. She opened up pretty easy, and Marcus says he's opening up as best as he's able to. It's a pretty fast engagement, a big deal to him. He, so he's already kind of like hinting that he has some reservations. He wants to make sure it's with the right person. The speed of everything is making it hard for him to get out of his own way. He knows his feelings are real, and he likes her a lot. Love level one. He wants to connect on a deeper level. I mean, don't even love. play it. I know. Well, at this you're point, at love level one at hometowns. Don't even say it. It just sounds bad. I agree. Because you have I like to her a lot. Yeah. There's something there. I think there's something there. Uh, The sister asks if he has those potential feelings. He says she knows. She says she knows why he moves slow. And she asks what his feelings are if he makes it to the end. Basically looking for a precog here. And he says the thing, a precog, by the way, for those new to the show, is saying if I get to the end, I will propose or I will accept a proposal. Uh, So he says things that... Uh, he wants more than anything else is to just be a father. He produces tears. Sister says, you'll be one heck of a dad. I love you. So big. Just let your guard down. It's worth it. They level before each other. And then we see Marks and Jen saying their goodbyes to the family. And outside on the bench, they get their little talk. Jen says she had so much fun. He says she did great and it meant the world to him. He's nothing without his friends and family. They loved her. He says the way that they feel about her is an extension of how he feels, which I thought was great. I want you to know that I'm yeah. falling for you. Love level three. And he knows that. Great love how level three. I agree. He, he played this pretty perfectly. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. Devin Strader has already level level four. So all these love level threes are falling short in terms of at least the love level race. And ultimately. Uh, she love level threes in back. They make out in the auto zone. She says, don't forget about me. So you're like, he's not going home. I, I felt like there were false stakes of him going home. Oh, 100%. They kiss. 
it starts raining. I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Next Porsche, and they're back in LA. Jen's getting oh, ready, sorry. putting on makeup, her Maybelline Fit Me, spring or summer <laughs> shade or winter. I don't know. I, I wrote this down too. I was like, Jesus Christ. Maybelline is getting their money's worth out of this franchise. A hundred percent. Grocery and Serene, you're doing their Maybelline commercials. They're going to get commercials in basically every episode of this whole damn season. They should have had one of I these hometowns. I just always see grocery when I, when I <laughs> see Maybelline now. One of these hometowns should have been they went to spend the day in Sephora in the Maybelline aisle and just were like doing each other's makeup all day. I would have liked to have seen that. <laughs> but then we get this, what I thought was the most interesting segment of the entire hometowns. We cut to a bar and we see all the four guys meeting up again to have one last conversation. We have never seen anything like this before what? to my knowledge. on earth? What on earth? And I, it's like uh, echoes of the fantasy suites from hell when they on Pilot Pete season when yeah. they had all three of them sharing a room together. To me, this was like we're coming for Love Is Blind. They were like, yep. we want to get some of that Love Is Blind feel into this. Mm -hmm. It was very strange. I agree, and it it doesn't. They basically have this conversation. We'll just boil this down. They have a conversation about how they're all feeling. And they're kind of joking about like, ah, screw you, dude, but you are my buddy. And we see that there's no real beef between any of them. They're getting along. Mm -hmm. They know it's a weird situation. And they all go around and everybody basically says, I'm super confident in how where I'm at with Jen, except Marcus. Marcus, yeah. as they're all saying, oh, this is great, this is great. Marcus is looking like, oh, I don't know about this. And he's getting suspense music. He ITMs that the other guys have no reservations about getting on a knee. And uh, <laughs> we then ultimately see him ITM that he has uh, happiness and he wants to feel happy with her, but he feels like he's behind. He's not at love Shame level three. Shame of not being there yet. Yeah, but he is. Like, he's at love level three. I know he doesn't know where the other guys are with his love levels, but he's where all of them are except for Devin. He's he's right in he the says, thick of it. am I incapable? Is something wrong with me? And then he tells the other guys Haunting. that he went to his hometown looking for clarity and he got some, but where he's at, he thinks he has reservations about how he's feeling. And Marcus telling the other guys he's competing against that he thinks he's behind them was my error, 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 error of the game. Mm. There's no reason to ever do this. There's no reason to ever, ever do this because now he's going into a fantasy suites round where like, you're telling me Devin Strader isn't going to tattle about this? You're telling me Jonathan mm. isn't going to tattle about this? They might. And that can knock him out. The guy out. who's fighting with everyone? Exactly. Theoretically. And he's basically giving this them ammo to, to get Mesnick him out of the game. what Molly Mesnick said about what we assume Devin. Yeah. Um, no, I thought this, this scene was very bizarre, and it does seem like they're focusing on Marcus's silence as like yeah. potentially setting up him going home. Mm -hmm. um, the next portion we see... They are arriving separately. We don't see them check in with DLP and say their love levels, which I thought was interesting. Mm -hmm. We only see him greet Jen. And Marcus is struggling to meet her where she's at. Um, if I go home, it's because she's run out of patience. So they're just kind of setting up like, oh, maybe Marcus is going home. Jen is dressed as a snow angel. This was one of my favorite looks she's ever had. Yeah. And she says she's to DLP, she's love level three with all of the men. That's why it's so hard, even though she didn't love level three, Jeremy. <laughs> this and season's gonna, I can't wait for the end of this season. Jesus. I, I know. It's going to be absolutely nuts. I know. Um, we get what I thought was like one of my favorite lines that I honestly think could have been the, the teaser mm -hmm. for the whole season is, um, them talking about like great night for a heartbreak and Devin goes like you're telling me or something like what was it you're it was something like that it was some like good joke like that I loved it but we get the rose ceremony Devin gets first flower Jonathan second flower Marcus gets third Marcus is going to fantasy suites 
and we say goodbye to Jer Bear. Oh, Stu Jer-Bear. Leonard's didn't do it. <laughs> the we see Devin Stu Dark Touch Leonard. Marcus. Yeah. <laughs> there are a lot of dark touches. <laughs> DLP did a dark touch too. We get the Tam Sig. Uh, Jeremy hugs it out with the bros, hugs Jen. She walks him out. We get this dumping bench speech, and he basically says, I'm grateful for everything. I've been myself with you the entire time. You put me at such ease. He's been confident. I in them just the whole want time. you to be happy. Just Great happy. exit. Great exit speech. It was very praising of the process, very praising of the crown. He will be on paradise if he wants to. And he gets in the car and drives off into the night. Jen ITMs that it was hard to watch him go. She didn't see a future with him, though. And she's down from 25 to three guys. She's opened up her heart to accept love when it comes. But Jeremy's same page comment, because he told her that in the exit speech, I thought we were on the same page, makes her wonder if she thinks she's on the same page with another guy who isn't on her page, a.k.a. Marcus. Next week is Fantasy Suites, and it will change everything. And we get these the promo for the two back-to-back nights, Monday and Tuesday. Fantasy Suites, helicopters, waterfalls, rooftop dinners, shopping malls. <laughs> uh, they're kissing in the water. We got some boats. They're feeling. She's feeling strongly about all three guys. Jen Love Level Four's Marcus. Marcus isn't there yet. He's struggling. Marcus tears. Jonathan's uh, fears are growing. Devin doesn't know how to get to the end with her. Jen wonders if she's doing something wrong. Then the men tell all, which we get no footage from. It's all footage right. of other guys um, from the the main season. It has no, there is no men tell all footage. That was interesting. Yeah. Why did they do that? I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. Um, we see a lot of Jen tears, Jen questioning herself because of, I guess, the Marcus thing. I am so nervous, so excited for the rest of the yeah. playoffs. Um, you know, I I don't think any of these hometowns were really, you know, Hall of Fame worthy. I agree. Just a bunch of solid performances. Um, I guess I'll give my error to that. To Marcus saying his doubts to, <laughs> yeah. to the second audience again because sure. I didn't really feel like there were that many errors no, I in agree. this episode either. So. It was all pretty textbook. Nobody missed an opportunity to play a love level. You had a little bit of Adam's familying happening with um, mm-hmm. Jeremy, but overall it was just kind of like a real down the middle, real like B plus hometown episode. I thought we do have some rose quotients to mention. Devin Ooh. at this point is at a 3.14. Jonathan is at a 4.14. And Marcus is in the lead with a 1.71. And I don't believe this will really be broken because next week, barring some kind of weird zero pointer that's given out in the fantasy suites, I think it will be hard mathematically for anybody to catch Marcus. Yeah. We'll see. I don't think they will. But uh, who was your um, MVP pace case? For his love level three, for his familial play, Jonathan was my M M M M V P P. I don't have as much confidence as you do that he's the ring winner. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was slightly worried. And I just feel like he played the date flawlessly and and really and the the loading of the um, the sacred word defense against the word love and then going to the love level three, I just thought was um, fantastically, fantastically orchestrated. Who is your MVP? I agree with everything you've said, but Devin Strader was my M M M M M V P the first one to Fair. reach a a viable love level for this season. <laughs> we saw Sam M's attempt to at take it. Take a love level four to term. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. He delivered his love level four. Um he just to me is a player that is and putting aside all of the allegations, his mm-hmm. play, his game play within mm-hmm. the lines of our field, in between the foul lines, in between the inbounds lines, however you want to look at it, whatever sports analogy you want to use, what he's doing in this game is, for me, what I'm going to probably take away from this season. This is a guy mm. who is not your standard bachelorette player. We saw it on the G-string strip date. 
he don't look like the other guys. He's playing a game that has had to dodge people coming at him basically all mm-hmm. season. He has been a villain. He has somehow navigated that to now go to fantasy suites. Yeah, villain, fool. Now he's in the finals. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I just think what he's doing this season is kind of special. It's something that you don't usually see. And that love level four to me was like he kind of understood that he needs to blow past the other guys in order to stay in this game. And he did it. He did mm. it successfully. So hats off to yeah, demonstrators his, gameplay like, this season. His mom play and the familial curse play I did yeah. like as well. Yeah. At any rate, that's it. That wraps up our recap of the historic Bachelorette Season 21 hometown round. The first round of playoffs will be coming back next week with, again, back-to-back recaps of the Fantasy Suites followed by the Mentel All. There will be no Twibbon next week, but there will be a Twibbon this week. So we hope you'll join us for that on Friday. We're going to break down all the news and all the parasocial plays that are going to be happening as a result of this hometown's round. And also check out our our Patreon if you haven't yet. I'm right now covering Love is Blind UK Season 1 in Clues Corner. It's a doozy. I mean, this season is unreal. It's so goddamn good. I love it. I'm a little behind your Mm. corners, but I am very much enjoying this season. Lots of great characters. The Brits do it the best. They're the best in the game. Truly. You know Bobby, that player? Bobby J? Which one's Bobby? Uh, he's Bobby. I'm at, I'm at when Benaya, I'm at the Benaya, uh, scene. Okay. The Benaya scene. Yeah. Don't give away any spoilers. The Benaya scene. Um, <laughs> I'm at the Benaya scene. I'm at the scene that happens before the scene and after the other scene. Yeah. I'll simply say this. Bobby J, it is revealed, attempted to be a music personality and he has a music video called body of a dancer that is available on youtube and i just covered that in the corner as well (laughs) i can't even think of who bobby is it's absolutely insane Um, you'll see him i don't want to give any spoilers away either you'll see who bobby j is um at any rate thank you for joining us check out all these things and we can't wait to uh join you again our digging deeper is out now today which was a very good digging deeper. We have in there a clip yes. of gro- talking about Grocery Store Joe. Wells Adams is talking about how Grocery Store Joe got into a fight with Leo on his first season of Paradise that they cut out completely because Grocery had to be a hero. And by fight, I mean physical altercation. That's wild. I know. That's wild. Every physical altercation, they've like punished all those people. So it's interesting. Not Grocery. Um, God, Devin just gives me such grocery vibes. It's yeah. it's wild. It's got I a get... little bit of a grocery style. Yeah. Um, but yeah, go check those out. Patreon.com slash Game of Roses. And praise be Dark Lord Palmer. Please rate this podcast. Please review this podcast. Please get a friend to listen to us and then please rate this podcast. Please review this podcast. Please get a friend to listen to us and then please rate this podcast. Please review this podcast. Please get a friend to listen to us and then 